Hey guys, this is Carrie from Artstitution, and today I am going to show you how to paint this Olaf painting. Um, I'm doing it special for my niece and my nephew, Ryan and Emily. Uh, I miss them very much uh, during these times that we're, that we're uh, kind of secluded to our own homes. So um, really missing my nieces and nephews. So I figured this would be a great way to kind of connect with them. And uh, they have their color boxes so they could paint from home. So um, what I'm using today is a 12 by 12 inched um, stretch canvas, but you don't have to use that if you don't have one of these. If you have a different size, feel free to use that. You just have to change the composition a little bit. If you have um, a different shape, if you have a rectangular shape, just, you know, kind of adjust the composition so you know you'll have more room um, somewhere to put, to even be even more creative if you wanna put some more stuff. So, um, all right, so we're gonna start uh, by drawing Olaf out. So all I'm using for this painting is this small flat brush and then this small round brush. Actually, this would be like a medium flat brush. So we're gonna do all the mixing with this brush. So first we are going to mix a gray color. So we're gonna take your paper plate. I have my egg carton. I didn't put green in here because I don't have green on there, but if you wanna add green, feel free to add green to your palette. I also filled up all my colors all the way to the top so I don't have to get up in the middle of this and re-pour paint. Um, you will not use this much. You could always get more. So really you only need um, a little bit of paint at the bottom. Um, and if you run out, just get yourself some more. And if you have extra when you're done, you would just put this into a plastic Ziploc bag and it will last you for days. All right, so we're gonna use this paper plate as our palette to mix. So I want you to take this that medium flat brush and I want you to do four scoops of white onto your plate. Now I'm not gonna um, wash my brush off before I dip it in the black. You can if you want, just be careful that water water likes to get stuck in this metal part. Just make sure that it's really dry. So you won't you don't need you don't need a lot of uh, black, okay? And I, I wouldn't dip your dirty brush directly in the middle of your paint. I would just scoop it from the edge. So just a little bit of black is gonna turn that into a gray. All right. You don't need a dark gray at all. So just really get that all mixed up. All right, so now we're gonna draw it out. So if you want, you can use the smaller brush. I'm gonna use the bigger brush. Uh, I'm just gonna take the ex excess off of it like this so it's not so gooey. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start with this circle down here, okay? So we're gonna make this, you, you could also adjust all this stuff. All these shapes can be adjusted later. If you find that you're running out of room when we get to the top, you could adjust things around, okay? So we're just gonna loosely put this in here. Don't worry about overlapping. You're gonna put a smaller circle here. Also, everybody's is gonna be different, and that's what we want. We're gonna put a foot here, and there's gonna be a foot at the bottom here. So all that it is, all this is, is our circles, okay? Now, this guy has, let's pretend like we're doing like an ice cream cone, okay? So we'll do this, and we'll kind of just put a top to it. Then you have his head up here, you have his big cheeks. He is really happy. Okay, so you could always make him bigger later, but for now, I'm just gonna make him this size. Okay, so like I said, these are only shapes. Don't worry about anything yet. We're gonna actually just paint this all in gray. Okay, now look how close the head is to the top of the canvas. So really use that space to fill up the canvas. And really spread that paint out. So you want this to be a nice, thin layer. No goopy puddles or anything. And in the end, everybody's gonna look different. And you know, don't be sad about that. That's what we want. Because art is all about interpretation. So if you went to an art gallery, you'd see, say it was an art gallery that only had paintings of 
people who do flowers and only do red roses. And then you'd have all these artists whose interpretation of red roses would be different, you know? And everybody is, you know, you can like some, you can not like some, it's all up to you. So you have a style and that's what we're gonna embrace here. Everybody's style. So when you write your name, and you have a signature, your signature has a style, right? And you use the same exact hand to paint. So you have a painting style. All right, so it's that easy so far, right? And you can make this fatter if you want, whatever you want to do. I like him because he's kind of like a big chubby snowman. So now what we're going to do is we're going to wash that brush off. And then you're going to figure out what you want the background color to be. I am going to do blue. You don't have to do blue. You absolutely don't have to do blue. It's totally up to you. Okay, so because mine is very light blue, I'm gonna add a lot of white to that. So I'm gonna do four scoops of blue. And then I'm gonna add some white. Let's try three scoops of white and see where that takes us. And you can even add a little yellow to the blue, make it a little turquoisey. So I'm, I'm having you mix a lot of blue because we're gonna do two coats of that white in the background. Okay. The most color you're probably gonna use in this is white. I think I'm gonna add a tiny bit of yellow to mine just to make it a little different. If you add a little black, it'll it'll turn it into a nice kind of navy color. So this isn't about getting to my color. It's about getting to a color that you like. So the color I'm mixing now is a little bit different than the color I have there. And I like that. I like how all my paintings turn out differently. All right, so now we're gonna take this color and we're gonna just paint the whole background. Go around your Olaf, keep it thin, because we want this to be dry by the time we come back to it. So keep it as thin as possible. Don't worry about all those brush strokes. And if you feel like you have to change your canvas around to get into, the cor into a corner or something, just don't feel free. It's not stuck to your easel, so you can move it around. But the biggest thing is keep the paint nice and thin. Okay. And I like to I like to put music on when I paint. I don't do it while I am recording because I don't want to interfere with any kind of music you guys are listening to. But if you have um, a Bluetooth speaker or a phone or an iPad near you, feel free, put some tunes on, put Frozen on, then you can get real festive. My niece and my nephew are obsessed with Frozen. And to be honest, I, my kids were never interested in watching Frozen because they think it's a girl movie. I, so I never actually saw it until this past Christmas and I was over their house and they were watching it for like the 20,000th time. And I watched it. Actually, I don't know, I think it was the first one, yeah. And uh, yeah, we have, I, I'm so used to boy, like super boy movies that, um, you know, I was caught off guard, but it was good. It was really good. I could see how people can get really into it. Um, and then you could probably ask them, any question about Frozen and they know the answer. So I'm sure a lot of you guys who are doing this painting are the same. And I wish I could sit here and talk about Frozen, um, but I really don't know much about it. <laughs> Except how to paint Olaf. And so, the biggest thing about all this is you have to be patient. Okay, um, you can't go from you know, this to this, 
fast. You have to build up. And you're gonna have all different age groups doing this. And the little ones will be done faster, obviously, and the more patience, the older the kids get, the usually typically they have more patience. So, you know, just go at your own pace. And uh, if you guys have any questions, you can always put it in the comments section of this video, or you can message me on Facebook or Instagram, or you can call me. I have a lot of people that call me or, or text me if they're in the middle of a painting and they have a question. I, have, I would love to help you out. So call me anytime, especially now when I, I'm home all the time. But I really can't wait to start painting with people again live. Because right now it's basically my phone is my best friend <laughs> when I'm doing these videos. And my kids have been keeping me busy, thank God. All right, so I'm going to do that. Oh, got a thumb right there. And then I do the sides. I like to do the sides because I think it looks better when you hang it on the wall. But don't feel like you have to do the sides. It's totally up to you. It just looks like nice and neat when, it, when you put it on the wall. Oop, I see a puddle. So just look around for any puddles, any places where you have a lot of paint. Just paint, you know, even it out. All right, so wash that brush, dry it really good. We're gonna do a second coat on Olaf, the gray, and we're gonna do a second coat um, on the background. Uh, I know it seems weird what we're doing now, but the way I teach is I build up. So right now we did the foundation. Uh, the foundation of a painting is, it, I call it the underpainting or a wash. It's you're just getting rid of all of the white. You're getting rid of anything that's distracting and you're pretty much building the frame. It's like building a frame of a house. If you don't build a strong frame of a house, the house is going to collapse. So we're, we're taking our time and we're building a strong foundation of the painting. So later when we do the detail, it'll be a lot easier. Okay, so right now this gray, you might be wondering why are we doing gray when Olaf's white? And the reason why we're doing that is because the gray is going to be the shadow color of Olaf. So we're gonna add white to him. That, that's gonna come in the second round. But we don't wanna add black until the very end, okay? Because I know kids especially want to use black right away. What happens when you use black right away is that when you go to do other colors, it smears and it's really hard to get rid of. So really try, try not to use black until you absolutely know all your colors, you're done with all your colors, and it kind of is like the finishing touch at the end, the icing on the cake. Don't worry if your shapes are different. All, Olaf moves around a lot, so he doesn't make the exact same face all the time. So, and I always tell my students, I, I'm not here to teach you how to copy a painting. I'm here to use a painting as an example to teach you techniques, okay? So it doesn't matter what we're painting. I use pretty much the same techniques in every painting I do. And it's secondary that you have a beautiful painting at the end. Um, the value is really in you guys doing this, the time it takes to do it, and the learning that you're, you know, all the stuff you're learning while you're doing it. All right, so you're gonna get that foot in there. And take your time because I think my background is still pretty gooey. It is. So what I'm going to do is wash that brush, dry that brush, and I'm actually going to take some more white and I like to put it on my, take a section of that blue and just add some white. Instead of adding white in the whole pile, I like to have just a section. And what we're going to do now that we have two, we have a really light blue and this other blue. I'm just gonna start putting little lines like this. I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna put lines like this, just to give it a little bit of an interesting uh, kind of um, texture. 
So I'm just gonna, when you get close, you can just take your brush and go this way if you wanna get close. And then I just go down like this. Try to make sure that all of these kind of go in the same direction. So if you go like this, whoop, it's coming out this way. And it's up to you how light you want these to be. Just don't worry if you get some on Olaf's face, it doesn't matter. We have a lot of work to do with him. And we'll go around, do you know, when you get close to him, um, like later on, we'll just, we're gonna put a little bit of blue around him. So don't worry about all these lines that are around him. If it looks funny, don't, don't worry about that. Just kind of get all this big space. Even if you get some gray in there from Olaf, don't even worry about it. Just get those streaks. It sort of looks like ice. Doesn't it? And you can go from color to color. You can take your original blue to help with the streaks. So I'd rather you not, I'd rather you, you could either go like this or you can just leave it you're the original color. Because we're gonna have um, snowflakes everywhere, so you're not even really gonna see the background that much. You're not gonna notice these lines as much. We're just kind of doing it for effect. And I want you to take this time to really make it exactly the way you want it. If you're using another color, you just add white to that, whatever color you're using. If it's purple, then add white to purple. Because this is this is an interpret this this reflects you, okay? This painting reflects you. So if your favorite color is purple, you could use purple. You know, no, you, this is all, you know, you, you, I'm here to teach you stuff, but there's also a lot of choices that you get to make. And you're gonna get to a point where you don't even need somebody here telling you what to do. All right, so we have that. And by the time you're done, it should be dry enough to go back with the original blue, the blue that we did the background first, and just kind of, if there's anything that needs a second coat, put that in. Be gentle, be light on that brush. Try not to use a lot of paint. I say that and I'm using a lot of paint here. All right, so when, when you get it to the way you like it and it's perfect and you love it, then stop. Some of my sections are still too wet to do a second coat, which is fine. I'll go back later and do it. Alrighty. So this middle should be kind of getting there as far as getting dry. So what we're gonna do first, before we start putting any white on Olaf, I wanna put his first coat, the first coat of um, the carrot. So orange, the way you make orange is yellow and red, but you need a lot more yellow than red, okay? So you only need a tiny bit of red added to yellow to turn orange. See how quick that turned orange? Now, there's a lot of oranges in the world, lots of different color oranges. You get to a color that you like. And you could always add a little bit more red. So what I did with Olaf's is I added a touch. When I say a touch, I mean barely any. I like to smudge it on the side and then I just add a tiny bit of blue to it. And it kind of just brings down the brightness of it. You don't have to do that though. Everybody's, you know, there's gonna be all different ages doing this, so. So if you want, you could switch to a smaller brush if it makes you feel better using a smaller brush. So if you could see where Olaf's cheeks come in here, if you put a line across, the top of that, um, the top of that carrot is gonna come to that crease. So we're gonna just put a little, and even if it's not exactly there, it doesn't matter. So I want you to just put a circle, circle for now, and just paint it in. 
your background may be, uh, your gray may be a little wet still, so don't worry about that. And then it's, it's gonna come to a tiny little point here, just not that much, just very, very subtle point. Okay. Like that. So we're gonna let that dry for a while, but it's in there, we know it's there, so we're gonna keep it. So everybody, we're gonna all meet at the same, on the same page here. Now I want you to wash both brushes off really good because we're gonna switch to white. I'm like, you know, I, I do everything I can not to have to wash my brush, which is terrible. All right, so if you need to use a different paper plate, use a different paper plate. I like to scoop my white out onto my plate and then use it for my plate. All right, so I'm gonna use this brush first and I have my white. It's got a little bit of blue in it, but that's okay. So what we're gonna do first, I want you to kind of take all the excess. You don't need a lot of white paint. We're gonna, we're gonna go from this cheek, it's right under the nose, all the way, it's gonna be the top part of where he's smiling, okay? See that? And we're gonna just put a cheek up here and we're gonna come down, go all the way around what we just did and come back up. All right, and then brush it all in. See that? And if you ever need to pause, pause me. Absolutely, pause. Don't use a lot of paint, keep it really thin. Okay. If you wanna sneak your way down a little bit, you can go as far down as you think you want his the top part of his mouth to go. The biggest thing is keep that paint really, really thin. Okay. Now we're gonna go up here. And if you wanna switch paintbrushes, absolutely. I, I'll probably jump from paintbrush to paintbrush. So you're gonna have these eyeballs and all they are are big circles, that's it. Nothing fancy. And I like to use my finger as a kickstand. Keep my finger nice and still. So I'm gonna put one eye there. And look how close they are. And one eye. I'm gonna make them actually bigger. You can make them smaller later if you want or bigger later if you want. There's never a point where you can't go back. So my leverage feels funny. So I am going to actually, I wouldn't, I would just be careful where you touch it because the blue is wet. So I'm, see I'm touching it only on the gray. I'm just gonna turn this around a little bit. That way it's easier for me to fill in. All right. So um, just because I use a brush doesn't mean you have to use the same exact brush. So I'm gonna go to the, the top of the head. I'm just gonna go slow. So I'm not gonna go all the way to the eyeballs, okay? I'm gonna go from here and I'm gonna leave some gray between the eyeballs. See how I'm doing? It's almost like Darth Vader, like a Darth Vader helmet. Okay, so you're gonna now I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to leave all that gray. I don't want you to touch all the other parts. Just go down here. That's fine. Okay. And we'll leave it at that. So the thing about this is the, it's almost like, it looks, I don't know, this guy reminds me of a marshmallow. I'm going to put like a, his chin down here and it's a little curve at the bottom. Okay. Now we're going to just get the sides of his face. So we're gonna put some white there. And we're gonna curve it out because this is now the bottom of his mouth. And then we're gonna come over on this side and we're gonna come up to there. Like that. And then we have his teeth. So we're gonna put some, I like using this brush because it kind of is the perfect length for the teeth. So I'm gonna come up across and 
come down. It's And this is a flat brush, so it's a lot easier to get that nice box shape. All right, so once you have the teeth in there and you're happy with it, we're gonna go back when this is all dry, we're gonna do some pure white on top of all this stuff. So don't worry about any of that. Same thing down here. So what we're gonna do, let's start over somewhere in the middle or to the right. So the brightest part of him is gonna be um, to, to the right. But I also want you to leave a little spot of gray so the neck looks like it's, like there's a piece of gray in between. And also this, is gonna come over this bottom one. So you're gonna have a curved line here. So just start filling it in over here like that, nice and thin. When you start getting to go here and you're, you want the, you don't want a lot of paint on your brush and it's gonna fade into that gray. That's called dry brushing. See how it's fading into the gray? So we're gonna do the same thing down here. Okay, let's start over here. We wanna keep a gray line in between here and the whitest part is gonna be over here. Like that, come all the way down here. As you go down this way, you're gonna keep a nice whoop, line in between here. And go to about here, a couple inches from the other side. Don't worry about all these lines, we're still gonna do one more coat of pure white on Olaf, so obviously you're painting on top of gray, so your white's gonna turn kind of grayish, and that's exactly what we want, so don't worry about it. And this might be a little bit trickier because you have a bigger spot that you're dealing with. So as you come over here, the paint should be coming off your brush. You wanna fade it into that dark, darker gray. And if you lose it, don't worry, I'm gonna, if you can't see the fade as much, at the end, I'm gonna show you how to get that back. Okay, so don't even worry. This is all practice. I'm gonna do the same thing with the feet, except we're gonna start over here at the tippy point. And as you come in here, we're gonna, if you hear a dog scratching, that's my dog scratching. So we want the gray shadow to be here, up by the foot. You might have to lift up your canvas a little bit and you're kind of just put some white down here. Nice and easy. All right, great. Um, so yeah, that is the biggest part of the paintings. We're gonna let that dry a little bit. I want you to wash that paint off your brush. Now, if you have anything like I do around my my Olaf painting. I see some, I'm gonna take my, I think I'm gonna take my lighter color. Anywhere you see that where it might be, you need another coat, get that in there. If you don't see anywhere and you feel like it's perfect the way it is, then you can either fast forward me or just watch me while or you could keep on working in the middle. Okay. And I know some kids, you know, depending on your age, get very impatient with the double coat thing. Um, and I get it. So if you're, if you have a little one at home and they're like, double coats, no way. Just don't, you know, they don't have, obviously they don't have to do that. The older the kids get, the more patience they have, generally. So I want you to get the background to exactly the way you want it, because I want this to be nice and dry, because we're going to come back and do some um, snowflakes on there. I'm even going doing another set of these little rays here. I think I like it. Okay, yep, I think I like it. All right, so I'm gonna just wash that brush off because we're gonna go back to the white. And really dry that brush off. So, 
what I'm going to have you guys do now is I want you to mix orange again, okay? But this time we're not going to add blue to it. So mix yourself. If you have some of the leftover orange, then great. Um, and then I want you to add just a tiny bit of white. So we have a nice orange color. And I want, a, I want another coat on there. Very light. So orange is really hard to cover with because it's very transparent. So see my orange here is different than my orange here. And that's great. I, I don't, it, it doesn't matter. All right. So we're going to go for round two with the white. So make sure that middle brush and the little, the little in the middle are nice and dry and clean. And we're going to go back to our white. And we're just going to brighten the cheeks up. Let's do that. This is going to be our brightest part. So the brightest part of the cheeks are going to be up here. Okay. So this is tricky. So watch. We are going to, I want you to stop a little bit above the mouth. Okay. Here and go all the way across. Okay. Don't worry about the shadow underneath the nose. We'll do that later. Okay. So we're going to go all around and just keep, keep that shadow above the lip a little bit. Now paint another coat on that, those, that, I don't know if it's one big tooth or a bunch of teeth, I don't know, whatever. That tooth, let's call it a tooth. Let's just paint a coat on there. Nice and light. All right, now we're going to, we're gonna do something a little bit different. So we're gonna take this flat brush or you can take the, the skinny brush. If you're gonna do the flat brush, I'm gonna hold it this way, okay? You're gonna keep some of the shadow on here, but all we want is some white coming around his lips like this. Come back up the other side. That's it. All right. And I, again, up here, if I'm going too fast, pause me at any time. I'll do the same thing up here. Just put another coat of white here. So we're going to use the same formula we did before. We're going to start to the right. And we're going to make sure that we keep this side, the left side, the darkest. Okay. See how I did that? Same thing over here. And make sure to keep that line in between because that's going to help guide us from when we do the black. So I can't reiterate this enough, but these kind of, all my paintings, this one included, you have to be really be patient and you'll see it, start seeing it build up and build up and build up. Okay. And you want to keep that paint nice and thin as we go along. Cause when, if you have a, an inch of paint on there, um, just the way I teach in the time frame that I teach, it's all you're going to do is end up like mixing, moving all the paint around. So that's why we go really, really thin. All right. So when you look back, you want to have, I got some blue inside my white. That's all right. I'm going to go with it. You want to have that shadow to the left here. Let's just make sure you have that. All right, and I think we gotta do the eyes still. So you could either, I would use the small paintbrush for sure. I'm gonna be lazy and use the big one, but you, I would use the small one if I were you. All right. And we'll just keep it at that for now. Um, so let's hop to the background 
and do some, actually, you know what? Let's not hop to the background yet. Let's add a tiny bit of black to a little bit of white. So we want a gray, but I don't want you to have a dark, dark gray. It just needs to be a little bit darker than our original gray. So if you look at this gray and that gray, see how this gray isn't, isn't much darker than that gray? And I'll show you why. And you could, again, use the little one if you want. So we are going to do, actually, I am going to use the little one. So use this guy. So watch this. I want you to do this. Underneath this carrot nose, there is a triangle shadow of the carrot. So just go up, just go to the shot till you get to the shadow that you, that's oh, that's above the lip. You don't have to go into that shadow, and then just paint it in. And then above above the eyes, I want you to just paint in almost like eyelids. Like that. Boop. Great. I want you to do a little under the lip here. Boop. And I think that's good. Oh, nope, I have one. I want you to do this on the above the teeth. I'm running out of paint here. Above the, it's just there's like a little shadow at the top of the teeth. It looks weird now because there's no black, but you'll see what this will all come together when we have when we do the black. All right. So clean those brushes, dry those brushes. And what I'm going to have you do now is actually I am going to have let's do um I'm gonna have you do the black because I think we have enough down now that we could do the black, um, but just be very careful, okay? I am going to switch from the little brush to the big brush, and I like to put the black on my plate so it's not goopy. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill all this in. I like to fill this in with my bigger brush, but when you guys get to the corner, the edges and stuff, Feel free to use that tiny brush. I'm a professional, so, and I'm also very impatient. So I'll use my, I'll, I'll swap back and forth. So really take the, this time to go slow. We're gonna do a whole nother coat on this, so don't worry about if it's transparent or not. See how I see all these brush strokes? You will totally have an, an opportunity to do another coat, don't worry about those. And if you don't wanna do another coat, you absolutely don't have to. Here's where I really want you to flip your canvas over if you need to get into these cracks over here, into these like little spots that are hard to get into. It's really important that you feel comfortable. That goes for the adults and the kids. I like to flip it all around And I like to use the flatness of the brush to do the, any kind of flat areas. All right. And flip it over. And I also like to do my buttons using this one because it makes it look all choppy. And I have a little hair sticking out of there because these buttons are all funky looking. So don't, you know, they're not perfectly round. They're all, they almost look like rocks. So I guess that's what they are. Duh, of course. Sorry, I'm a little late to the game here. Yeah, they're like little bits of coal probably. I'm gonna do another run. So keep that light. We're gonna do another coat on those later. We're, and we're really not that far from done, so. But we want that to be nice and dry by the time we are, uh, by the time we're done with all of our snowflakes, we want those dry. 
All right, so here's where it might get a tiny bit tricky. So I, obviously the top of the head, you can't see really. So I just put these like three lines up here to, for his hair. Then I use this tiny brush and it has a point. It's at the it's pointiest tip. You could either twirl it or you can flatten it, okay? I like to twirl it for the eyebrows and basically use the point, the pointiest part at, at the end of the eyebrows. Then you press down on it and as you get closer to the top, you kind of pull up. Same thing here. If you want to pick up your canvas and you know, so you have better leverage, feel free. And then you can just fill them in until you like them. Until they're as, they're as thick as you want. Cool. So then when we get to the eyes, between the gray and the white, I just put a circle around the top part. Circle around the top part. And don't worry if your hand shakes. These don't need to be perfect at all. And then you're gonna use this little guy for just a round shape, round circle right in the middle. Round circle right in the middle. All right. And we'll color the nose in later. For now, we're just going to keep it like that. And all I want you to do with these, this smile is I want you to come up with that smile. And just so I don't stick my finger in the black, I'm going to come this way and come up with that smile. Okay. All right. We're doing good. Then I, of course, I have this guy. I have a little bit of a line down here. And then I just kind of put a line here. I didn't put, I don't go all the way around. Typically, I just kind of put a little bit of black. I don't like to outline fully. Perhaps because I don't want to set myself up for having to make a perfect line. And I'll show you little tricks too if you if you have lines that you don't like. I always do. Always. I'm going to show you a little uh way to fix them up. So don't worry about that if that's what happens. And just get his foot there. All right, so remember, this look. This doesn't look as bold as that because we didn't do the second coat of all that stuff. So it will pop out, but the reason I wanted you to do black is because I wanted to do the arms, okay, before we did the snowflakes so get let's get all they are is a straight line i like to make it a little bumpy because it's like an arm a stick sorry an arm a stick arm then you're going to put little branches for fingers and you are going to do the same thing over here Put little fingers. Okay, so when we start doing the um, um, snowflakes, I just want you to kind of be aware of the black so you don't stick your finger in it. Then you can make these as thick as you want. And I like to, I like to like squiggle them a little bit. All right. So by the time we're done with the snowflakes, we uh, the all the black we just did will be dry, and then we can finish the nose, finish the black, and we're done. The snowflakes add a lot, so I'm going to. I didn't realize I didn't do the bottom here. I know nobody's going to see the bottom, but I need to do it for my soul. If you know what I mean. 
All right, so snowflakes are fun. And I'm gonna teach you how to make one and then I want you to kind of like use your imagination to make up your own because snowflakes are the kind of thing where you definitely don't need to have it looking exactly like mine. You can, you can have a good time with it. I'll show you a little formula of how to do it. Okay, so I used my little tiny brush. And I dipped it into the white and I have it on my plate. Of course, my white's all mixed in with my blue, but that's okay. So what first, the first thing I did was I made little like movement lines. All movement lines are like, they're little lines to make it look like your character's moving a little bit more. So I put movement lines over there, movement lines up here. Do you have to put these? Absolutely not. It just kind of adds to the funness. Woo. And it also, if you are going to put these, it also helps you know where you can put the, the snowflakes and stuff. Whoop. 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 All right. Cool. I think that's it. Um, all right, so snowflakes. I would twist my brush a little bit so it's pointy. Let's start over here. So all I did was I put my finger um, as a kickstand. I did an X and then I did an, another X and then I did another X and then I did another X. And then you just, you kind of change up what you put at the end. I put like little arrows on this end, arrows on that end. I did like opposite arrows, so they're sticking out instead. And then I put dots, 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 dots. So that's one, I put a dot in there and there. Oh, and I put a dot there and there. All right, then I filled in the space over here with just snowflakes, with just little dots. And then I put some of them, I just kind of did X's and didn't do anything fancy, just to kind of fill up space. Just keep in mind where the black is so you don't stick your finger in it, like I'm sure I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna use my, my pinky as a kickstand over here. Put one over here. And don't feel like you have to put your snowflakes where I'm putting my snowflakes. And if you do, by accident, put your finger into the black paint, just wait till it dries and you'll be able to go right over it with that blue. But if you try to go over it while it's still wet, it might uh, just be make a big mess. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some more some random snowflakes around. I'm snowflake happy, so put a lot of snowflakes. All right, so then I'm gonna put another one here. Again, you can make your your um, you can make your brush pointy by flattening like that or spinning it. I like to flatten when I make my um, snowflakes, but everybody's different. So, and don't again, don't feel like you have to do what I'm doing. I mean, there's a million bazillion designs in the, on the planet, not just mine. So just have fun. Another one here. Plus everybody's gonna have different sizes, ol size, sizes of Olaf's. <laughs> that sounds weird. So you, where, you know, you might have to put your snowflakes somewhere else other than where I'm putting them. So don't feel like this is yours. This didn't exist an hour ago, and now it exists. So that's pretty cool stuff, right? Okay, just make sure to change up your size, make it interesting. So he's having a good time in the snow. Personally, I'm not a huge snow person. 
but I'm also a human, not a snowman. Okay. Yeah. Look, that's my stomach, and I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. I'm going to make this a little brighter. I would also absolutely love if you shared with me what you painted. I would love to see it. So if you can text me or put it on Facebook, that would be awesome. I, I love seeing my students work. You should be proud of it. Okay, I'm going to start up here. Even if you have to keep on making, flattening your brush, that's absolutely fine. And it's funny, I imagine we started all over how different it would be, because you know what we're going to do. So if this is your first time painting, don't be hard on yourself. You know, I think you, you need some time just to learn how to use the tools. So all, only you know when you're done and keep going until you feel like that's it. Just about there. Make some snowflakes. Maybe some. Make that a little darker. All right. So, cool. So before we get into the black again, again, if you're not done, just pause me and then continue. All right. So I have no more orange, so I'm gonna make myself a little bit more orange. Mine dried up. Doing okay. Put some white in it. Over orange. So get to an orange you like. And I am going to paint that in again. Now this orange is completely different than the orange I had, but whatever. All right, so now, now that we have the orange and you have your orange pile, I want you to just take a little bit of white and just put it in to a section of your orange. So you have nice, light orange. Now you're just gonna go, you're gonna put some light in by just making these curved shapes like this. You probably can't see mine, so I'm gonna make mine a tad lighter. And of course, I had blue in there, but that's not good. I'm running out of white, so I'm seeing if this can, if I can, nope, that's not gonna work. Let's see. Let's try that instead. All right, so just try to put some at the top of the nose like that. Now, see, I, I now you're gonna take a, put a little bit of tiny bit of black, but if you have to mix up some more orange, mix some more orange because mine's all messed up. So I'm mixing some more orange. That blue really screwed me up there. I'm gonna mix a tiny bit of black into orange, so it's like really dark orange. See how it looks, it, it looks muddy. And then you only need a little bit of this at the bottom of the nose, you're just gonna put some of this dark orange. Here. Boop. 
kind of blend it in a little bit, blend it in. All right, cool. Looks good. Now we're gonna go for our second round of black. And if you wanna, at any point, brighten up the white, um, definitely do that. I'm not gonna do that. I'm pretty much out, tapped out of white, and I don't wanna, I don't wanna get up in front of the camera. So I'm going to go back to the black, and again, you can, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna start with my two brushes, absolutely clean, absolutely dry. Okay. And I'm going to take it off my plate instead of straight out of my egg carton. I'm going to start in here and just get that nice coat of black in here. And, and as you can see, my mouth on this one looks is not the exact same shape as the mouth on that one. And it still works. And nobody's going to have the exact same shape mouth. All right, so take your time. Color that in. So now what I want you to do is take the small one. Carefully, you're going to put a line. I'm going to flatten it because I use it like a razor blade. I'm going to continue this line all the way across. I'm going to do a second coat down here. Second coat down here. Here. Now I'm going to take this skinny brush, and if you need any second coats like on the eyebrows, if you want to make them a little bit thicker, now is the time. If you need to do um, a second coat on these guys, do that. All right, so now the only thing we really have left is the black around the nose. Now you don't have to do the black around the nose. Um, if you don't want to, it's totally up to you. I will do the black around the nose. I'm going to really be careful. If you don't want to take the chance, you don't have to. So mine is a little bit thicker. All right, I like it better thicker. All right, so um, I'm gonna show you what to do if you wanna kind of um, make these a little less bold. So let me make them a little bit more bold so you can see how to make them less bold. So say I do all my, I have this one. The end is fun because you could kind of go back and adjust things. So that's the adjusting period is at the end where you kind of go and tweak everything and make, a mix, make it exactly how you want it. So say you're like, hey, I kind of want his mouth to be wider. All you have to do is, you know, Get, right now, my my uh, all my white's gone, so I can't say if you want it white whiter, you can go make it whiter. But you can. Oh, I have some of this gray here. You can go back and make his mouth a little bit wider. But just overlapping. Just watch that black overlapping your background. Okay. So it's easy to fix there. If you want to get rid of some of your um, uh, 
black that, that you that your outline, all you do is go over it. When it's dry, you go over it with your gray, and it'll get rid of it. So. If you want to go, this is all extra stuff. So if you want to go and make a darker shadow under here and a darker shadow on the side, you can, but it's optional. This can be a little tricky. So if you want to make a darker shadow here, you can do that. Same thing on this side. It's a little too dark. Just test it out, and if it's too dark, add a little bit of white. I'll put a little bit of darkness over here. Anywhere you think there's gonna be a shadow. I think we can make a little bit of a darker shadow up here if you want. If you wanna make Little eyebrow thingies, whatever, a little darker. Make a second coat of there. So we're just gonna go around and tweak some stuff out. If you want it darker here and here. So yeah, just kind of go around and make it your own. So yes, that is Olaf for you. So I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I love, love, love painting and and uh do being able to do this for you guys and i miss you emily and ryan i miss all my students and my family and um stay healthy and oh you know what i forgot one thing now that i'm sitting here staring at this another optional thing if you want to put a little bit of a lighter tint on the buttons you can i don't know if you can see mine i'll make them a little bit lighter so you can see so there's like a little shine on the buttons and there's a little shine. That's a little bit, there's some spots of lighter gray here. If you want to do that, up to you. Like I said, you can get into this, into this as you want, but all right, I, I promise I'm done. <laughs> all right, I miss you guys. Thanks for painting. Bye.